Go ahead. Well, I was really pleased with the way our team came out uh, and played in the first half. I thought we were really ready to play. Uh, we had a great sense of urgency, uh, great energy and enthusiasm, uh, executed fairly well on both sides of the ball in the first half, and uh, I was really pleased with that. Uh, I don't think that uh, we sort of maintained that intensity as well in the second half, uh, which is something that we certainly need to work on. Uh, we can't let external factors, whether it's a scoreboard or any of that type of stuff, you know, affect our attention to detail, our mental energy, intensity, intelligence that we play with um, so that, you know, we can continue to execute. We made more mental errors, had more penalties, things like that in the second half than the first. So we need to put together, you know, 60 minute performance, you know, all the time, regardless of who we're playing. The good news is, is we did get to play, you know, quite a few players. Um, and, and that was a, a good thing. And uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned at every position on our team in terms of some of the experience gained, um, whether it's offensive line, defensive backs, uh, it doesn't matter what the position. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that we can improve on. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's great to, you know, be home again uh, to play a game in Bryant-Denny Stadium with fans. You know, our fans were great in Atlanta. Hopefully we'll have a very passionate, enthusiastic full house, you know, for this game. Um, and I think it's, you know, really, really important that our players have the right mindset between week one and week two to really address the things that we need to improve on and make significant improvement in our ability to consistently execute uh, between one week one and week two. So, um, you know, Mercer um, is – you know, they're a little different, you know, kind of offensive team. Uh, they had a dominant win last week. They've got a lot of starters returning. Um, you know, they had a, three really big wins last year. Uh, so this is a program that has really, really improved. Uh, they run sort of a little bit of a wishbone wing T type, you know, offense, which is a little bit different from what we normally see, which would be challenging for our defensive players. And, um, you know, these guys have, have, you know, good players relative to their level. And I think the focus for us needs to be on what we do and how we do it and uh, how we do it regardless of um, the circumstance and the situation in the game. So that's what we're going to stay focused on. Uh, injury update, you know, Chris Allen uh, does have a foot fracture that will require, require surgery. So he's probably, he's most likely out for the year. Okay, with that, Coach, we'll go ahead and get started with John Zener. John, go ahead. Uh, hey, Coach Seven, you obviously had um, Henry, Henry and Jamison both playing pretty big roles in the opener. How have they – what have they brought to the team kind of on and off the field as, as pretty experienced guys? Who, who, who's he? Uh, Jamison and Henry Toa. Um. Well, I think both of those guys, you know, played really well in the game. Uh, Henry played well. Um, you know, Jamison made some big plays. I mean, there's things that every player can improve on. Um, you know, we didn't do everything perfectly at either one of those positions, but uh, those guys are great competitors, and I'm sure they're anxious to, you know, try to improve the things that they can do better and continue to be able to make some, some you know, big plays. We'll go to Cecil Hurt. Coach, you went with Chris Owens at tackle and Darren Dalport at center. And I know there's been a lot of experimentation on the line. Uh, how did you feel like Saturday's performance was, both pass protection and run the ball? Well, I think both those guys played well in the game. Uh, I was encouraged by, you know, both players. And Dalcourt is obviously one of the players of the week. And I thought Chris Owens played really well in the game. Um, tried to play physical, uh, sustained finish blocks, uh, you know, didn't really give anything up in pass pro, uh, made some mental errors. Um, you know, people think that, you know, when the quarterback gets pressure that, um, you know, it's always the offensive line. Sometimes it's relative to the protection that we're in. Sometimes we didn't change the protection correctly. Um, so, you know, we brought pressure on ourselves. Um, so those are all things that we really need to work on and correct. But, um, for the first game out, fundamentally, we can certainly improve up front, everybody in the offensive line. But 
I thought for the first game with all the new guys, they did a really good job. Okay, we will go to Michael Casagrande. Michael, go ahead. Yes, how would you assess the running game? And also with Bryce, uh, his decision-making, whether to run or stay in the pocket in some of those plays, could you assess some of that? Well, first of all, you know, I think we had some good runs uh, where we actually got a hat on a hat, finished blocks, and did a good job. I think the runners were, um, you know, played physical and played pretty well. Uh, we put the ball on the ground, you know, three times, which we need to clean up two by the runners, one by the quarterback, which really wasn't his fault. Um, but, um, you know, I thought Bryce did a really good job. I thought he played very composed in the game, had lots of poise, made good decisions. Um, but again, for a first game, uh, he's going to be like everybody else. You know, he's going to look at it and say, oh, there's things that I could have done better, and uh, that's going to be the focus for this week. Go to Aaron Settles. Given your post-game comments about, about Trey Sanders, it's pretty clear you have a lot of respect for what he's gone through. Just how arduous was that journey to get back to where he is today? Well, I mean, I don't know. I can't, I can't be specific here and give you the extent of all of the injuries that he had, but it was all they were all pretty significant. Uh, and, um, you know, there was a point in time where uh, I think he questioned and a lot of us questioned, you know, would he really be able to come back? And it because of his perseverance and his resilience to, you know, continue to work um, the way he did is, you know, what allowed him to come back. And when you see a player go through that kind of adversity, uh, it certainly makes him stronger as a person, but uh, you also have, you know, a great feeling for um, seeing him be able to come back and, and do well in the game, score a touchdown and uh, have some positive plays and uh, certainly, for him, uh, it's got to be a great confidence builder as well. Go to Nick Kelly in Tuscaloosa. Drew Sanders is a guy who uh, played a variety of positions in high school with quarterback and receiver and, of course, on defense too. Um, how did that uniquely prepare him, do you think, to be the linebacker he is now? Uh, who, I, I, who was he speaking of? Drew Sanders. Oh, uh, yeah, Drew is um, – done a really good job for us. He's been a really good special teams player. Now he's going to have the chance to step up and start, although we've kind of rotated uh, the three of those guys at outside linebackers, always starters. So, um, and, you know, we, we've got a lot of confidence in Drew. Uh, he's a good athlete, um, smart, hard worker, plays with toughness, gives great effort. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, have to, you know, bring some other guys along with that position as well, but we're really pleased and confident in Drew. We'll go to Mike Rodak. Uh, Cameron Latu was one of the players of the week this week, and uh, Kendall Randolph got out there quite a bit as a blocker. Just how would you assess that position overall and what opportunities might remain for uh, Jaleel? Well, you know, I think, first of all, I'd like to evaluate the guys that did play in the game and did a good job in the game. And, you know, Cameron Latu certainly – you know, did a good job. He didn't have a lot of experience. Uh, I think, you know, uh, the passes that he caught, he made some really good catches, um, made a good run after a catch, you know, scored a couple touchdowns, did a good job of executing, played his position fairly well. So uh, this is a real positive for us at that position. Um, you know, we've always liked, you know, using Kendo at, uh, as a big tight end type of blocker. Uh, and I thought he did a really good job in the game, especially the fact that he was coming off of a, an ankle, you know, sprain. So um, we'll continue to try to develop players at that position. And hopefully, you know, they'll make the decision to do the things they need to do to improve. And that will reflect in how much playing time they get. Go to Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach. Yeah, just wanted to get your thoughts on the way the, the secondary played and specifically Brian Branch. You talked about his versatility in the preseason. How much of a, a luxury is that to be able to move him around at different spots? Well, I, I think that, you know, we played OK in the secondary. Um, we had a lot of respect for their quarterback and their skill guys, and we did a good job of covering. You know, we got a couple bang, bang pass interferences, uh, you know, Brian, you know, had a chance to play the ball once and didn't. The guy made a really good catch, really good throw and catch on him. Um, but, you know, for the most part, there was a lot of adjusting that the players had to do in a game, and I thought they did a really good job of that. I'm talking about the entire back end based on the formations and adjustments that we had to make, and they kept their poise. Uh, and, 
you know, played fairly well. So, um, you know, there's a, always a lot to improve on, and we'll certainly go to work on that today. Joseph Goodwin with AL.com. Speak up, Joe. We can't hear you. Uh, you guys hear me now? Yeah, talk loud. Uh, Nick, I was just wondering, with this being Labor Day, of, of how many recruits were you going to call today, and what was going to be the message of that? Well, it's Labor Day, and Monday is, you know, a big game plan day for us, a big day with our team to get started on the next team to make corrections for the last game. So it's not really a recruiting day uh, from that standpoint. It's not an off day for us. It's like any other Monday uh, during the season. So, you know, the big focus today is make corrections from the last game, uh, start a scouting report in the preparation for the next game, uh, and that's, you know, pretty much what our plan is on every Monday. And that's not going to be any different today just because it's a holiday. Okay, we got three more. We'll start with Steven. Coach, uh, just talk about Will Reichert's confidence as a kicker and how contagious that is for the offense. Well, I, I think that, you know, the entire team has a lot of confidence in Will, um, you know, Guy's been outstanding last year and so far this year and did a really good job kicking off in the game as well as making the field goals. So I think the whole team has a lot of confidence in them. I think, um, you know, I, I, I guess the offensive team does too, but, you know, the offensive team really wants to score a touchdown. So, <laughs> you know, when they kick a field goal, maybe they're not so happy about it, but they're certainly happy for him. We'll go to Tony. Nick, we saw what Jamison Williams can do from a playmaking standpoint with his speed, but how much does he also open up the offense for other players just with that that vertical threat he has? Well, I, I think that, you know, having the right combination of guys at receiver is really, really important. And, you know, I do think um, he complements, you know, the other players that we have because he has great vertical speed uh, and the things that he does well sort of complements some of the things that some of the other guys uh, do well, like, you know, John Mechie and some of the other receivers, Slade, um, JoJo, some of the other guys that we have. And, you know, we're anxious to have all those guys continue to develop. And I, I think that, you know, as we grow and learn as an offensive team, you know, maybe we can, you know, feature those guys in the things that they do uh, even more so than we did in the first game. We'll finish up with Joe Gates. Coach, midway through the game, the uh, cameras caught you and Joel Billingsley talking on the sidelines, and it seemed like he was very intently listening to what you had to say. Uh, his father actually uh, put a tweet out there about uh, enjoying that moment. Can you let us know uh, what the message is that you were trying to uh, convey to him in that moment and just uh, how you think he responded uh, on Saturday? Well, you know, we're just always trying to encourage players um, to – uh, do the right things and do the things that they need to do to create value for themselves. And, um, you know, Jaleel and I have talked, you know, on several occasions because he's certainly a guy that uh, we want to uh, have success for his own benefit individually, as well as, you know, for the team. And, you know, sometimes when you get a little external encouragement, it can be a positive thing for you. And uh, I think he, you know, for the first game, I think he did okay when he went out there and played. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you.